told three. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations, and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. The prophecies predict that in the last days, men's heart would become cold, that mockers would come scoffing at the watchmen and those who claim that Jesus is coming soon. They'll be saying, where is his coming? The prophecies predict that sexual immorality would return like the days of Lot. Jesus said it would be like the days of Noah. And according to Jewish tradition and the Book of Enoch and many other extra-canonical books, that means genetic tampering. The Bible predicts that Israel would be opposed by the nations, that there would be a fighting over Jerusalem, and that she would be surrounded by enemies, and that Gog and Magog would come against her, would come against her. The prophecies predict that people be, would be willingly ignorant, willingly ignorant, or as Dr. Hoven says, dumb on purpose. The prophecies predict lawlessness would, lawlessness would increase and people would be lovers of themselves, chasing after their own lust. And finally, the prophecies also predict that Damascus, the capital of Syria, would be turned into ruins, or a ruinous heap to be exact. Now, I don't know about you, but I would suggest that any five-year-old can look at the world today and see that these things are happening exactly as predicted by the scriptures. That is, unless they fall into the dumb-on-purpose category, or as the Bible calls it, willingly ignorant, which is what you have to be to not see these things. And just like these things have been predicted and are coming to pass before our very eyes, likewise, the wrath, the wrath of God, the wrath of the Lamb, and the final judgment will also soon follow just as the prophecies have stated. That is, stars falling from heaven, the sky rolling back like a scroll, the bottomless pit being opened, and demons pouring out, torturing those who have taken the mark of the beast, Babylon, the great harlot, will be destroyed in one hour. And Jesus, the Messiah, will come down with ten thousands of his saints to judge the nations and to set up his millennial kingdom. 2016 was one of the craziest and most prophetic years in modern history, whether people acknowledge it or not. And my friends, I believe that we haven't even seen anything yet. 2017 will bring a time that humanity has never seen or thought possible. A time of unthinkable darkness and deception. Yet our loving Heavenly Father told us about it thousands of years in advance. And it's in Him and in His Son Jesus that we find rest for our souls in these chaotic, historical, dark, and final days. Isaiah chapter 26, 17 through 21 says, Like as a woman with child that draweth near the time of her delivery is in pain and crieth out her pangs, so have we been in the sight of O Lord, we have been with child, we have been in pain, we have as, as it were brought forth wind, we have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Thy dead men shall live, together with my body shall they arise, awake and sing, yet they dwell in the dust. For thy dew is the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Come, my people, 
enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord come out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth shall disclose her blood, and shall no more cover her slain. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean, your host, and uh, we have a new website, and I mentioned that in a couple of episodes, but in case you haven't heard an episode in a while, the new website, scriptureandprophecy.com. That's scriptureandprophecy.com. I spent a lot of time building a more professional-looking website that's easier to find. Uh, The podcast episodes are on the right-hand side on the sidebar at the bottom of the page, Uh, There's a resource page that I'm working on uh, where I'm posting resources, you know, books, uh, what Bibles I use, things of that nature so that it's easy for you to find. Uh, And of course, there's a support tab at the top if you're interested in supporting the Mission of Truth. Uh, You can go there and you can donate or subscribe. Um, There's a contact page, so you just fill out a contact box to uh, to send me a message instead of having to go through a forum or... Uh, something of that nature. Uh, So I'm hoping that it'll be a blessing to you. Um, Now, in regards to the podcast, um, you know, I spent a couple weeks praying about this and and mulling this over, and I've decided that things will stay as they are. Uh, We'll do our scripture reading and commentary podcast, which there's a a decent amount of people who love that uh, on Tuesdays. And then we will have our prophecy podcast, podcast, uh, which is this podcast, and it'll be on, probably, I'm thinking about moving it to Friday, but it'll be Thursday or Friday. So, things are going to stay exactly the same, with the exception of we have a new website, Scripture and Prophecy, and the big big reason for that change is because that's what we focus on now, is Scripture and Prophecy, and it's been that way for two years, and when I set up TruthFed three years ago, it was a news site, and so... Uh, we're just moving more into scripture, into teaching, into prophecy, and uh, so that was the reason for the website change. And uh, you know, uh, also we're doing our readings and stuff out of the King James Bible. Um, uh, we made a uh, move back to that after a lot of prayer and uh, seeking God. And uh, I explained some of that in a podcast that you can go back and listen to where I dis- where I talk about why you should use the King James Bible. And uh, we'll talk about more of that uh, in the near future. Now, uh, we just talked, you know, I just read to you about some of this stuff that's taking place that I wrote down. Uh, the mockers and the scoffers and the things going on with Israel. Now, in case, you know, or unless you're willingly ignorant, uh, you've seen... Uh, what's been going on with Israel over their settlements, the UN, UN telling them they can't build anymore and trying to divide up uh, Jerusalem and those types of things, and the U.S. abstained from voting, and then Kerry comes out yesterday and tells Israel they can't be a democracy and Jewish at the same time, which was just absolutely mind-boggling. But that's the type of things that are taking place right now. So I'm just going to read you some of the headlines and information, uh, just in case... Uh, You're unawares of what's going on, and this uh, I think this is very, very, very important uh, because of what it could end up leading to, and uh, this could be the catalyst for all this. Uh, So we have on December 23rd, you notice how they always do this garbage around Christmas. Um, I haven't looked at the new law, but they also passed some more fake news laws, uh, which is their way of silencing truthers is what it is. Um, but they always do this stuff over the holidays. And, uh, you know, I told you that this administration could do a lot of damage before January 20th, and that's if they even leave. And I know I, uh, I shouldn't, you know, everybody doesn't think that's possible, but I'm still watching, wondering, yeah, are you sure? Are you sure that they're actually leaving? Uh, the best site for this, for keeping up on the information that's dealing with Israel, in my opinion, is BeholdIsrael.org. It's run by Amir. He's actually a Christian Jewish man. He's an Israeli who lives in Israel. Um, 
you know, it's it's someone giving us the information from the ground floor, basically. All right, United States abstains from allowing United Nations Security Council to pass anti-settlement resolution. Uh, so resolution 2334 passes as United States abstains. 14 of 15 member states vote in favor. Uh, Trump as the UN things will be different after January 20th, according to Trump's. He's saying, he's trying to tell Israel to just hang on. It's going to be different after January 20th. We shall see. But the United Nations Security Council on Friday passed a resolution that simultaneously declares Israel settlements as illegal and calls for an end to further settlement construction and growth. The resolution passed as the United States did not use its veto power against the resolution, but rather sustained. Of the 15 member states, the United States and all 14 and other voted in favor, passing the resolution 2334. Uh, and, uh, well, let's just keep going. Prime Minister Netanyahu responds to the UN Council. So, citizens of Israel, I'd like to reassure you the resolution that was adopted yesterday at the United Nations is distorted and shameful, but we will overcome it. The resolution determines that the Jewish quarter, listen to this, the Jewish quarter in the old city of Jerusalem is occupied territory. Do you understand what they're saying? They're not saying the Muslim quarter or any other quarters of Jerusalem are illegal or occupied territory, but specifically the Jewish quarter is occupied territory, according to the UN. Do you see what they're doing? I mean, they're talking about the Western Wall as being occupied territory. First of all, the only occupied territory in Jerusalem is that which doesn't belong to the Jewish people. This is amazing. I mean, you're seeing Bible prophecy being fulfilled before your very eyes. You know, Jerusalem's becoming that, uh, you know, that thorn in the side of the nations, and the nations are fighting over Jerusalem. And in our lifetime, we have, we're seeing them vote as a world government to divide Jerusalem and take it away from the Jewish people. which, of course, is never going to, to work. Um, Netanyahu has made it very clear that they're not going to play ball. They're going to still continue to do what they, what they want. And uh, listen to this. Israeli's ambassador to the U.S. We have clear evidence Obama orchestrated the U.N. vote. Demir, to submit evidence to Trump administration, states Obama gave Palestinians ammunition for political and diplomatic and legal war with Israel. Israeli Ambassador to the United States Ron Demir reported on Monday that there is clear evidence that President Obama orchestrated the United Nations Security Council vote on Resolution 2334, labeling all settlements as illegal and calling on total halt of settlement growth. This is not looking good. And then, of course... John Kerry yesterday. This guy is is just a demon. Kerry cites two-state solution in serious jeopardy as reason for U.S. abstaining and UNSC vote claim Israel will return occupied land. It's unbelievable. And then I told you about uh, his quote that Israel can't be both Jewish and a democracy. So here we have these things ramping up. The fight over Jerusalem, over Israel building settlements. Israel's going to continue to build settlements. There's no way they're ever going to give up the Jewish quarter in Jerusalem. And I'm asking, I'm just posing the question, is that going to be what causes Mog and, Ga and, Mog and uh, uh, Gog and Magog to decide to invade? Is that the hook in the jaw? And, uh, you know, what's interesting, I don't know if I've ever shared this on the show, but I'm going to today. First of all, something I want to sh tell you about Gog and Magog that you might find interesting that I learned from uh, Chuck Missler. If you look up Amos 7, 1, so Amos chapter 7, verse 1, in the King James, this is one of the areas where the King James doesn't do a very good job. 
And it says, Thus hath the Lord God showed unto me, and behold, he formed grasshoppers in the beginning of the shooting up of the latter growth. And lo, it was the latter growth. Okay, that makes no sense to no one, right? Doesn't make any sense to anyone. But if you look it up in the LXX, that is the Septuagint, here's what it says. Amos 7, 1 says, Thus the Lord showed me, and behold, a swarm of locusts were coming, and behold, one of the young devastating locusts was Gog, the king. Now what's interesting is if you go to Revelation chapter 9 and you read about the locusts coming up out, the swarm of locusts comes out and they have a king over them. But the king is called Abaddon or Apollyon. And so I just thought that was interesting. And I hold the view that we don't understand this whole Gog and Magog thing at all. And I know people say, well, it's just Russia with some uh, Arab nation allies. And, you know, and that, that might just be, it may be as simple as that, and that may be all there is to it. Um, but I just suspect that there's something more to it. And I think it's one of those prophecies that we'll understand in hindsight, like most prophecies. But I wanted to share something with you. And you may have seen this, and maybe you didn't. But last year, about this time, uh, there was a boy. Uh, it was in September of 2015. There was a young Jewish boy. His name was Nathan. And he had a near-death, out-of-body experience uh, that took place on the first night of Sukkot uh, in 2015. And he came from a secular background, had never learnt anything about Jew his Judaism or any of that stuff, was completely secular. But he describes from his experience uh, a story that's very similar to what's written by the prophets uh, about the last days. So I have some bullet points that I want to point out to you. I've got like 10, 10 or 15 bullet points uh, from his dream. Now you can go to YouTube and you can watch this. Just look for Jewish boy Nathan's dream. Something, Search something along those lines and you'll find it. Uh, he is speaking in Hebrew, but there's subtitles there for you. And uh, you can watch the whole thing. Uh, but here's... Uh, and and this and here's the here's the thing is this was so um, believable that the head rabbis are the ones that brought him in uh, to have him give his testimony of this dream. Okay, so these these head rabbis really believe that his dream is 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 legit, and he really was sick. Um, so let me just go through the, the story for you real quick, and I think you'll find some of this interesting. Uh, so he felt extremely ill with chills and a cold feeling in his hands and legs. His body shook, hurt, and suddenly he found himself hovering over his body, six feet in the air. He kept rising and rising and saw the whole earth and eventually was led to a tunnel. He saw a light that was full of love and security. Uh, he can't properly explain how amazing this was. He says the Mashiach, that is the Messiah, is already here and is very well known. He says people will be very surprised. He is a Baal Tishva who has not sinned once since his Tishva. He also helps others to be kosher Bichva. Now, we obviously know that there's a Messiah coming to the earth that will be a false messiah right the antichrist and uh so when i hear jews have dreams and visions and things like that and they talk about the mashiach already being here i'm thinking he might be but he's not the mashiach that you think he is because your real mashiach he already came died paid the price for our sins and we're waiting for him to gather his own and he won't be returning to the earth until this is all over with and that is to put an end to it. But anyway, let's go on to the next bullet point. He says, The war of Gog and Magog started on the 27th of Elul, the 11th of September 2015, and will get much worse in the weeks or months to come. He said there will be a huge world war that will eventually lead the nations of the world to unite and attack Israel and Jerusalem. Now, we're seeing things I feel like that could really, really lead up to that, especially with this whole new UN resolution. 
Here's what I think was interesting and totally goes against what most scholars believe. He says, the leader of the free world is known above as Gog. He says that Gog is none other than Barack Hussein Obama. So this kid who comes from a secular background gets extremely sick, nearly dies, has a vision, and says that he was told that Gog is Barack Obama. He says the whole war will last only about two weeks. He said Mashiach will fight against Gog and kill him. Gog will be buried in Israel. He said during the war, two atomic bombs will be shot at Israel. And Hashem, when you see Jews say Hashem, uh, they're usually talking about the father, but they don't. They, they, his name is an unpronounceable name in, in tradition. So instead of, you know, Yahweh or Yehovah, they'll just say Hashem. So he said, the atomic bombs will be shot at Israel and Hashem will suspend them in the air for two weeks and they will eventually fall on Tel Aviv. Israel will be captured, but the worthy will survive in Jerusalem. So the Mashiach will wear a garment that is stained in blood. Now that part is actually true. We know that Jesus is coming back, right? With his robe dipped in blood. And uh, so anyway, I just thought I would share that with you because we're doing an awful lot of talk about Gog and Magog lately. We see all of this ramping up and all of this fighting over Jerusalem that just started, you know, just a few days. I mean, that's been going on for forever, but... You know what I mean, as far as actually passing resolutions and then the U.S. bailing on Israel, because normally the U.S. would just veto these types of things. But these things are, these things, this has been passed now. And what concerns me is, number one, there's evidence, according to some of those article, articles that we read, that the U.S. was really the orchestrator of the whole thing and then abstained to vote. That puts us in a very bad position with Elohim, does it not? And, you know, a lot of people have speculated, oh, why hasn't America been judged? And, uh, they, you know, there's been a lot of speculation that uh, the reason why America hasn't been judged is because of the way she treats Israel. She's always been there to protect her and veto uh, ridiculous uh, bills and resolutions and things passed by the UN. But we have a leader right now who has disdain for Israel and... Uh, we may be getting our judgment sooner than later, is my point. And uh, we know judgment's coming anyway. Uh, but this does not put us in a good position. And uh, so I find that very, very concerning. We need to be praying for Israel. You know, one thing that I've been praying a lot for, that I make sure I get in every morning when I pray, is I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ around the world who are suffering, suffering for the name of Jesus are being butchered and tortured and imprisoned and persecuted. And I pray, you know, Lord Jesus, please come quickly. Please fulfill your promises. Gather your people to yourself. Take a stand for your people. And then I pray for Jerusalem and Israel. And, you know, because we need to be praying for our family. Our family, you know, these we're all children of God. And we need to be praying for our brothers and sisters that God would intervene. And, you know, Jesus isn't coming back until people are actually crying out for him. You know, the scriptures say, Baruch haba bashim Adonai, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And Jesus said, I'm not coming back until they say this, until they're saying this. You know, we wonder, what, what's, the, what's with the delay? Maybe the delay is simply that we're not calling out for our Messiah. And so we need to be praying every day, come, Lord Jesus, come. Come fulfill your promises. Delay no longer. You know, Daniel says when he's wanting an answer to his prayer, please delay no longer uh, in doing this thing for your own namesake. You know, because the prophecy said that God was going to do uh, certain things, and, and Daniel's saying, you know, for your own namesake, do what you said you were going to do. And so that's kind of my prayer right now. And it has been for a long time, but, you know, do what you said you were going to do for your own namesake and for the sake of those who are suffering for your name 
and for their testimony, for the word of Elohim. And uh, so that's kind of my thoughts today. It's painfully obvious that we're living in the last days. And um, the only way you can't see it is if you're just willingly ignorant. Willingly ignorant. All this stuff is happening right in front of us, right before our very eyes, in real time. There's no denying it. The prophecies are being fulfilled, which means the rest of it's going to be fulfilled as well. Very, very soon, I suspect. So make sure. Work your salvation out with fear and trembling. Remember that salvation comes by belief in Jesus Christ alone, not your own works, lest any man should boast. If you're trying to earn your salvation, you're going to be very, very disappointed. Seek God. Cry out to Jesus. Pray for His coming. Pray for Him to come back quickly. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm glad to be back. Uh, don't forget about the new website, scriptureandprophecy.com. Scriptureandprophecy.com. And uh, again, if you want to support this mission of getting out uh, the Word of God, Scripture and Prophecy, uh, you can do that also by going to scriptureandprophecy.com. And there's a support tab uh, at the top. Peace and grace be with all of you. God bless.